particular part of the of the object. And then, oops, sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. I forgot to do that. Okay. Um, and then two pencils or two forks or two cooking utensils, whatever is is uh, easy for you to hold. Okay, awesome. Yes. And then um, I just want to give one quick shout out to Move United. Um, they are sponsoring our Tuesday and our Thursday class. So um, we just really want to thank that. Yeah, yeah. Cynthia is holding up the Move United ball. Um, fitness kits are still coming for those of you that are waiting. Don't worry, you should be getting them <laughs> sometime in the near-ish future. Uh, they're experiencing delays through the manufacturer that's making the equipment. Okay. So I'll have you come to a seated or a standing position. And then actually one more quick reminder, because I just forgot to mention this. Um, once we start to get into the visual and vestibular work, please just move at your own pace. It's okay to experience feeling dizzy, maybe even feeling a little nauseous or your eyes starting to feel tired or watery. Um, these are all normal things that you might experience when we work the visual and the vestibular system. But once you start to experience any of those symptoms, back off, take a break. So just listen to your body and move at your own pace. Alrighty. So coming to a grounded position here, feet either on the gr ground or your, the base of your chair. And we'll close the eyes. And I just want you to find your breath to start with. Notice where it's going. Notice maybe where it's not going. And as you follow your breath, I just want you to tune in to your bones. So thinking more about the weight of your bones today your sit bones and your pelvis if you're in a seated position, your feet if you're in a standing position, and then just tracking the bones all the way up to the top of the head. Trying to feel the shape, the weight, where all of those bones are, how they're resting either on the chair or on the floor. Go ahead and set your intention for class today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Great, all right. We're gonna start with our test retest today just to really do a before and after because we haven't done this for a month or so. So we'll just start with a few overhead arm raises. And remember for these check for these check-ins, you're just noticing ease of movement, speed of movement. Does one side get higher than the other? Is there pain? So overall, just taking note of everything you're feeling overall. Mm -hmm. Good, let's do shoulder internal external rotation. So goalpost arms, rotating the hands up and down. Noticing how that's feeling today, comparing the two sides, comparing the angles. Good. Okay, we'll move with the neck. So looking to the right or the left, and then the other way. And just going back and forth a few times. How is the neck feeling? How is the upper back feeling? Good. And then tilting your head side to side. So tilting to the left, tilting to the right. And again, just taking note of that. Most people have an easier direction for this one. Good. And then we'll bring hands together out in front of us, palms, palms facing each other, rotating the whole body to the left and to the right. And again, just going back and forth a few times. How is this feeling today? If you're a standing athlete, you can be doing sit to stands. 
You could be doing single leg balance. If you're on the floor, you could be doing push-ups or bridges. Yeah, whatever suits you there. Okay, good. So just taking that check-in, holding that with you, and then we're gonna start to find the taps underneath your shoulder blades. And we're gonna add a hum to this one again. So when you're ready, mouth is closed if you can, so just nasal breathing. You're gonna go all the way to the end of your hum. See if you can make it louder today than you have in the past. Really using that diaphragm. When you get all the way to the end of that exhale, breathe in through your nose and do two or three more hums like that. You can stop your tapping. Let's maybe take that last hum and we're gonna find a roll down, okay? Rolling all the way down to the ground and then coming back up, lifting everything up to the ceiling and then relax, maybe finish out the end of the hum and take a break. Okay, go ahead and just find a twisting rotation here with your arms, tapping your back. Right hand taps left low back, left hand taps right low back. Yeah. Just finding your breath again, do a couple more and then coming back to the center, great. We're gonna bring both arms uh, up into a Y position overhead. If this is a little too hard for your shoulders, we can always cross the arms over the chest. You're gonna lean forward as far as you can. If you need support with your hands on your lap, you can do that too. So I want you to pitch forward with a flat back so your arms are still in that Y position and then come all the way up right again. Bring your hands behind your back Try to touch your palms together. Don't interlace today. Just try to touch the palms together behind you. Arms out into a Y position, flat back to lean forward, keeping head and neck and spine aligned. Come up to a seated position, arms come down and behind you. So you're pulling your heart and your chest forward. Yep. Arms come up to a Y position, hinge forward, and then up and arms behind you, trying to touch the palms together. Just do one more like that. Arms up Y, lean forward. Yep. And then sit tall, arms behind you. Okay, good. You're gonna give yourself a big hug. Doesn't matter which direction you do it, just give yourself a really big hug. And I want you to Think about pushing your shoulder blades forward and broadening your mid back. So really round your upper back. And then you're gonna open your arms wide, palms face forward, lift your chest like you're about to give somebody a big hug. Switch the direction of your arms, give yourself a big hug, round your upper spine. Breathe into that area in between your shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, open the arms, lift the chest. Yep. Give yourself a hug, switch the direction. Inhale into that space between the shoulder blades. And then open. Yep, let's do one more like that. Give yourself a big hug. Round the upper back, inhale. And then exhale to open. Okay, good. So you're gonna bring, so elbows at 90 degrees as if you were holding a tray in front of you. Palms are gonna face up. And then I want you to turn palms facing down. Palms face up, palms face down. And I just want you to go back and forth, but I want you to exaggerate those in both directions. So if you can turn the palms a little bit more down and a little bit more up, uh -huh. Just going back and forth. This is really good for people who find themselves on a computer or a phone for a lot of the day. 
And if you're able to really spreading your fingers as wide as you can when you do this. Uh -huh. Okay, now when you turn the palms down, I'm gonna have you make a fist or as close to a fist as you can. Turn the hands up and spread. Hands down, make a fist. We're just getting a stretch over the tops of the forearms and then up and spread. Yep, down fist, up spread. Down fist, up spread. Keep going back and forth. See if you can pick up that pace. So taking a little bit of coordination. You might feel those muscles getting tired. I certainly do. <laughs> yeah, let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Shake the arms, shake the hands out. <clears throat> okay. We're going to bring the arms overhead. So you're touching your elbows. So you're kind of giving your head a hug with your arms. So your arms are sitting directly on the top of your head. Yeah. If this is too much for your shoulders, we can stay with the arms crossed on the front of the chest. Okay, so just hold right there. Take a breath down into your low back. And then take a side bend over to the left. Come back to the center. Inhale into the low back again and exhale side bend to the right mm -hmm. come back to the center inhale low back and exhale side bend yeah and if you only have one arm overhead that's totally fine center inhale exhale side bend let's do one more each way inhale center exhale side bend last one inhale center exhale side bend good release the arms give them another shake okay we'll do our body tapping so pick an arm whichever arm you want to start with remember you're going to be working down the outside of the arm and then up the inside of the arm i'm using karate chops today because that feels kind of good you can grab you can stroke you can knock, you can tap. Whatever feels good for you and your body. Do that maybe three times through. When you've done one arm, feel free to go right into the next arm. But maybe just take a pause. Notice the difference between the two sides. And then we'll go into the other arm. Following the meridians, waking the whole body up here. And then just staying with your breath. Are you able to bring your breath to nasal breathing? So where you're just breathing through your nose. This helps calm the nervous system. It helps filter the, the air coming into our bodies. And it, it helps us so that we don't over breathe. Typically when we breathe, breathe through our mouths, we're over breathing, which can throw some of our systems off. Okay, good. Once you've done both sides, just sitting with that noticing. Let's go right into the legs, working down the outsides and then up the insides. Maybe getting the tops of the legs as you cross over. Noticing where some of your sensitive spots are. Maybe you can return to those spots after class. And once you've done that a few times through, we'll come to the center, we'll still the body, just noticing what you're feeling. Let's take that right into our head scratch. Scratching all the way over the scalp. You can use your knuckles, your fingers, your nails. Moving the scalp with you as you do this one.
Yep. And then we'll take the top of the ears and we're going to pull up and back behind us. Up and back behind us. Just a gentle tug. Nothing too, too hard. And we'll grab the lobes and we'll pull gently down and back behind us. Yep. And then you're going to bring knuckles to the top of your cheekbones, stroking down towards your lower jaw to give the muscles in your jaw a little bit of relief. As you do this, let your jaw hang. Notice if one side is a little tighter than the other. Yep. Okay, good, and relax. Okay, so we're gonna bring some of those face and tongue movements in now. So I want you to get really big with your arms and your hands. So arms all the way up and out to your side. Spread your fingers if you're able to. Get big with your mouth. So open your mouth, make maybe squinty eyes or some kind of a face with your cheeks. And then you're gonna get really small, come into your body, pull your hands into your chest, lean forward. And again, scrunch your face up, squeeze your lips together. Maybe almost as if you were gonna give someone a kiss. And then get big, open jaw, hands, chest, everything. Ah, you can even say ah. And then get small, bring everything inwards. Make kissy lips and squinty eyes. Mm -hmm. Everything gets big, jaw, eyes, fingers, and everything gets small. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody's watching you. Exaggerate it. One more, one more. Get big. Ah, and then get small. Okay, good, and relax again. Once more, just shake everything out. Okay, we'll give a little bit of love to the hands. So let's rub the hands together. The back of the hands. Uh -huh. Good, and then bringing wrists out in front. So arms are straight out in front of you or bent in, whatever you can do. And let's just start by drawing a circle with your wrist, giving a lot of love to the wrist today. And then switch directions. And then can you start to bring that into a figure eight, just from your wrist, your arms don't have to move quite yet. <clears throat> And then I want you to start to bring your arms into it, exaggerating that movement. So you've got both arms drawing a, a horizontal figure eight so that they're mirroring each other. Yeah. And can we make that figure eight even bigger in front of us? Maybe the arms kind of start to cross each other. Can you bring your spine into it now more? So when the arms come behind you, you lift, and then in front of you, you dive forward, really exaggerating, almost like you're doing a butterfly stroke as if you were swimming. There's no wrong way to do this. Just get big with your movement. And last one. Okay, and relax. Awesome. Nice work, everyone. Okay, let's grab your letter ball or your ball shaped object of some sort. Okay, so for those of you that have been with me for a while, go ahead and go right into playing letter ball with yourself, whether you're moving it around you or you're playing catch with yourself or catch off of a wall. Okay, so yeah, just go into that. I'm going to explain it for any new people we have joining us. So holding this ball into your chest, you're gonna pull it away from your body in any direction you wanna pull it away from. Quickly look at the ball, say the letter and the number that you see and pull it back into your chest. Pull it out to a different spot, do the same thing, pull it back in. So, excuse me, every time you pull that ball away from you, you're pulling it away at a different angle. Try to get hit all of the angles around you, behind you, above you, below you, 
Mm -hmm. And if you're not using a letter ball, just making sure that your eyes pinpoint on a very precise point on whatever object it is that you're holding. Mm -hmm. Just gonna watch people here for a sec. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do have numbers on your ball and letters on your ball, I'm gonna layer in here. Okay, so if you have, I'm bringing math into this, so I'm just gonna apologize ahead of time. For those of you that have numbers and letters, <clears throat> when you catch a number, you're gonna multiply it by five and you're gonna say that answer. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm just getting your brain going. So when you see a number, you multiply it by five. When you see a letter, um, you go two letters after that. So if I see an A, I'm gonna think of a C and I'm gonna think of a word that starts with the letter C. And then um, let's see, uh, cool, okay? And then I would keep going. So thinking of a word that has the letter two letters after or multiplying the number by five. And you're just trying to go, as quick as you can, still playing letter ball, shouting out words or numbers, okay? For those of you that don't have letters or numbers on it, you're just gonna keep playing letter ball as you are. This gets the whole body moving, it gets your eyes moving. Keep going. And if any of you feel like you're not good at math, you're doing great. I know you're doing great. Maybe do five or six more throws. Yeah, just gonna watch people here. Yeah, nice work, everybody. Okay, when you've done those five or six throws, I'll have you pause. <clears throat> you're gonna hold that ball. If you're able to hold that ball directly, um, directly above you so that you can see with your eyes the letter, the a, a letter or a number on a ball. For those of you where it's hard to hold your arms up, you're just gonna use a point on the ceiling. And I just want you to keep your eyes on that point. You're gonna hold it for about 20 seconds. Don't move. For those of you that are blind or visually impaired, you're gonna tilt your head up towards the ceiling and slide your lower jaw forward and just hold that. Otherwise, just your eyes are staying on that letter. Okay, good, relax for a sec. Pull that letter out to your right. Remember, don't move your head, just your eyes look at the ball. Don't let that head move. Keep your eyes locked on that letter and number. You're gonna hold that for a certain number of seconds. For those that are blind or visually impaired, you're just gonna turn your head all the way to the right and hold that. Keep holding, keep holding. I'm gonna scoot in. Okay, and relax. Pull the ball all the way to the left. Remember, you can always use your finger if that's more realistic for you. Head stays forward, just the eyes. Look at that letter or number. For those of you that are blind or visually impaired, just the, or the whole head is gonna move with you. Holding, holding, holding. Challenge your eyes. If you find that this is hard for you and you can't hold your eyes like this for more than 20 or 30 seconds, this is a great exercise for you to do on your own. Okay, relax. Bring that ball up and to the left. Same thing, head forward, just the eyes on the ball. Make this hard for your eyes. It should feel like a strain. Holding, holding, holding. For those that are blind or visually impaired, you can bring your whole head with you. Holding, holding, holding. Notice if it's hard and relax. Last one, pulling it up into the uh, upper right hand corner. Again, just the eyes. Make sure your head's forward. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Making sure no one's cheating here. 
Yep. Holding, holding, holding. And then go ahead and relax. Ooh, wait, okay. You can set that ball down. <clears throat> let's just do one quick uh, movement check in here. So let's go both arms raising overhead. And you're just noticing if there's any difference comparatively to the beginning of class. Okay. And then we'll find shoulder internal external rotation. Ooh, that one got better. And then we'll find cervical rotation. So just the head and the neck looking left and right. And then head tilts, tilting the head one way. Ooh, that got better. And the other way. It's always nice when there's, when there's small improvements. Thoracic rotation, so hands out in front of you, rotating whole body left and whole body right. Just going back and forth. Let's see, which ones am I missing? For standing athletes, maybe you're doing some sit to stands, just noticing if there's a difference there. You could do single leg balance. You could do push-ups or bridges if you're on the floor. Yeah, and then just, just curious as to kind of a halfway check-in. Yeah, Lynn, nice. Um, for those of you that noticed improvement, thumbs up. If you didn't notice anything, side thumb. And if it got worse, thumbs down. Yeah, Claudia, I see you. Awesome. Wow. Wow. That was a good, um, that was a good read for everybody. That's great. Okay. Thanks everyone. Relax. Yeah. I just do that because I'm curious and it's also a good check-in for all of you. Okay. Um, we're going to do some vestibular work here. So for those of you that have a chair, if you're able to spin, if you're in a spinny chair or a chair that uh, rolls and spins, you can do this one in a seated position where you're spinning yourself in circles around in your chair. If you're standing, you're just gonna be uh, spinning yourself. And if you're seated and you're gonna be staying seated, we're just gonna cross the arms over the chest, yeah. And before you go into this one, let me maybe just show you. You're gonna be moving your whole body, head, neck, and eyes. Make sure your eyes stay open for this. Circling around you, going as quick as you can, okay? So I shouldn't say as quick as you can. Um, start, start at a pace that you know is right for you. If you wanna make it harder, go faster. If you wanna make it easier, go slower. If you're doing this for the first time, I suggest starting with maybe two or three circles, taking a break, assessing. If you need to close your eyes, you can do that or to continue on. Okay, so when you're ready, go for it. I'll be showing you a different, a couple of different versions, but maybe doing anywhere from two to eight circles in each direction. If you've been taking this class with me for a while and you're finding that you can do more circles without getting dizzy, that's awesome. That's kind of the point of all this work. Can I ask a question, Rachel? Yeah, of course. Um, so do you want to uh, sort of like spin around in the chair or because I'm a little lost now? <laughs> yeah, if your chair spins, Lori, spin around in the chair. Okay, I guess it does. And, and, and start slow and notice how you feel. Just start with maybe two circles and then reassess okay. if that's right. Okay. Just, stop, just want to make sure I had it right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one sounds funny. It almost sounds like something you would see a little kid doing. Um, but that's the point. We're trying to channel our inner kid to work on our vestibular system. This is something that we lose over time as we age. Um, and just with the, the way today's world is built. Okay, so taking breaks every time you get dizzy. And then you can do a couple more, but make sure you take breaks each time you get dizzy. Make sure you do an even number in both directions, no matter what variation you're doing. And when you feel like you've had enough, because <laughs> I've been talking for a while, go ahead and just take a nice roll down all the way to the ground. And I'll have you find your breath. Yeah. That's great. I still, still, I still see people going. That's great. You can keep going to challenge yourself. No rush. 
just resetting a little bit here. And then coming all the way back up and sitting tall. Yeah, nice work, everybody. Okay, so we're gonna add some rocking into this now. So I'm just gonna have you start to find a rock or a sway with your body from side to side. Okay, so whether you're seated on the ground or on a chair, I want you to think of, <laughs> Cynthia, you're going to recognize this cue. I want you to imagine that you just sat in gum under your left butt cheek and you're like, oh, ew, gross. So you're trying to lift that left butt cheek out of gum. And then you shift the other way and now you're trying to lift your right butt cheek out of the gum. Yeah. And you're just going to be going back and forth. So you're trying to hike that hip up and get your butt cheek out of the gum on each side. And you're just going to be shifting from side to side. Now, for those of you that know you have a stronger side, I want you to do a few extra reps on that side. If you're like, oh yeah, my, it's much hard, it's, whatever side is harder for you, do maybe a few extra sets on that side. I'm gonna keep going both sides just to even it out, yep. But just, Finding that weight shift from sit bone to sit bone. If you're standing, you're going to be doing the same thing just from foot to foot. So finding your balance, shifting from one side to the other side. Yep. And then can we start to bring the arms out to the side with you? So as if you were really reaching for something on one side, shifting over and really reaching for that thing on the other side. Still trying to lift your butt cheek out of the gum and just exaggerating that reach on each side. That's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. Just do a couple more here. And last one. Good. And then go ahead and set the arms down. Let's do a few shoulder rolls and we're gonna get, jump a little bit more into some visual work. So seeing if you can inhale to shrug the shoulders up and then exhale down. Mm -hmm. Making those shoulder circles as big as you can. It's okay if there's crunchiness. Okay, one more. Great. I'm going to have you grab one of your pencils to start. We're going to do some pencil push ups. So if you've seen me, if you know what we're doing, just go right into the pencil push ups. I suggest that people who have glasses to take their glasses off if they can still see the pencil clearly. Otherwise, no worries, you can leave them on. Yeah, and just as a reminder for this one, so you're holding the pencil out at arm's distance in front of you. For those that are blind or visually impaired, I'm gonna give you something else to do. So just hang with me for a sec. So you're looking at the tip of that pencil, keeping it right in between your two eyes. Slowly pull it in towards your face. When or if you start to see two pencils, pull it away from your face, okay? You're moving slowly through that. If you do not see two pencils, I'm gonna layer on and make this a little, <clears throat> a little harder. So if you don't see two pencils at any point, you're gonna start to tilt your head from left to right as you do this one, as you pull the pencil in, as you pull it away. And if you can do that, you're gonna start to move your head in all of the directions, rotating right and down and up and you're just staying focused on that pencil as you move your head fully around. Notice the faster you move the pencil, the harder this becomes. Yeah, good. So if you're moving your head, yeah. So Patty, still make sure you're bringing that pencil in and out though. So if you're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're doing the one where you're moving your head around, I still want you pulling the pencil in and away. For those that are blind or visually impaired, I'm going to give you something slightly different. <clears throat> you can still hold that pencil or your thumb out in front of you and your whole body is going to move with it. So you're going to tilt the pencil 
up and away or at any direction you want to, but I want your whole body to follow the tip of that pencil, reset back to the center. Pull it out in a different direction, reset back to the center. Different direction, reset center. Yeah, yeah, Lori, that looks good. So you're just moving your whole body with that pencil or your thumb, whatever it is that you're looking at. Yep, and I'm just watching people here. Checking yourself and make sh making sure that you're not favoring one eye. And it looks like everybody is looking pretty good with that. Maybe just do two or so more variations of whatever your is it is that you're doing. Yeah, and remember if moving the head is too challenging, you do not have to move the head with, with this one. That's just an extra add-on. Okay, go ahead and relax. I'm gonna have you grab the other pencil. So you've got both pencils now. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, I feel like as my tree grows, it just gets in my way more and more. So I'm gonna have to figure out <laughs> how to get this tree out of my way. Okay, so both arms are out to your side. At shoulder height, you're holding both pencils. Yep, rotate to your left. And I want you to look back and forth. This is everyone is gonna do this variation. Look back and forth from front to back pencil as quickly as you can. Okay, now keep moving your head and your eyes. And now you're gonna slowly rotate into the other. So now you're rotating to the right. You're still moving your head back and forth. And then move back to the left. You're still moving your head back and forth. So you're just gonna find this slow rotation, but notice now that your eyes have to find the pencil because you're moving. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. That looks good, everybody. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, um, Lori, for the Lori that I can see right now, Lori, make sure uh, you have one arm on the left side of your body, one arm on the right side of your body. So your hands are at shoulder height. So bring your arms out to the side of you like you're about to give somebody a really big hug. There you go, there you go. Hold them, hold them there. Hold them out to the side of you, Lori. So pretend like you're about to give somebody a big hug and you're gonna hold your arms out there as you rotate. Yeah, good. For everyone else, I just want you to do maybe one more on each side. If you get dizzy for this one, take a break. Yeah, and maybe for those of you, um, for those of you that might be fused in your neck, you're, yeah, yeah, sorry, Lynn, I just thought of that. You're gonna be, bring your arms closer and you're gonna be doing the same thing, but just your eyes are gonna be darting back and forth. But you can play with how far apart your hands are, but it's, it still is the same challenge for your eyes. Sorry, I should have, I should have layered that one on. Yeah, try that for a couple and just see how that, yeah, there you go. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. All righty, so we'll come back to the center. You can drop the pencils. Let's bring the arms behind you, interlace the fingers if you're able to. Open your chest forward. And then you're gonna bring the hands up and behind the head. If behind the head is too much, we can cross the arms across the chest. Take a side bend to the left and a side bend to the right. Now hold this side bend to the right. Start to curl forward, trying to touch your nose to your knees and then rolling up on the other side back to a seated tall position. So side bend left, roll down and through the center and then come up on your right side. Side bend right, roll down and through and back to the center. That's it. Can we inhale to side bend, exhale to roll through the center. Inhale to side bend, exhale, roll through the center. You've got one more. Inhale side bend, 
and exhale, roll through. Okay, good. Great. Okay, coming to a little bit more coordination here. So let's see, I'm gonna have, let's start with this. Let's bring one hand to the top of the head. Yeah, uh, so let, let, maybe we'll all do this together. So let's bring left hand to the top of the head and then right hand. And if top of the head is too much, you're gonna bring that hand to your chest. So like right hand over the heart. Yeah, either one. And then you're just gonna start to find a tap from thigh to thigh with your, did I say this backwards, everybody? So you've got left hand over your chest or on top of your head, if you can put it on top of your head, and your right hand is tapping back and forth from right to left thigh. Okay, I just want you to stay with that. As you keep that tap, I'm gonna show you both variations. The other hand is gonna tap low back, top of the head, low back, top of the head, low back, top of the head. If you're doing the chest version, it could be low back and chest, low back and chest. Whatever it is you can reach. If you can't get to the low back, that's totally fine. And I just want you to try to keep a rhythm between those two taps. You've got one arm tapping thigh to thigh, one arm tapping up and down. Okay, pause, switch your hands. Left hand taps the thighs, right hand taps up and down. Find the rhythm again, just challenging the brain. That rhythm can look like whatever or how fast or as slow as you want it to. Okay. Getting some arm swinging in here. <laughs> Gonna make you switch it again. Switch, go right into it. And can you pick up the speed? Switch again, go right into it, pick up the speed. We're gonna do two more switches here, switch again. Hopefully this is getting a little bit easier, maybe not. And last time, switch again. Can you even pick up the speed that much more? Okay, good, relax. Okay, good. Bring both arms across the chest. I'm gonna switch the pattern here. You're gonna open the arms big, tap the head, open the arms big, tap the thighs, okay? Open arms big, tap head, open arms big, thighs. Open head, open thighs. I'm gonna layer on. Open head, open. When you tap the thighs, I want you to cross your arms over. So your arms make the letter X. Then I want you to do another tap, switch the direction of your arms, so other arm over, and then open big. Head, open. Make an X, tap your thighs, switch your X, tap your thighs, open big. Head, open, X to tap the thighs, cross the tap the, the thighs and open. Head, there we go, open, thighs, switch the thighs, open. Head, open, thighs, switch the thighs, open. Okay, stay with that pattern. The reason I always have you, oops, I always have you crossing your body when we do these kind of, uh, this kind of coordination is because it helps connect the two sides of your brains when we physically touch the opposite side of our body. So doing something, oh, I messed up. Doing something where you can, you're always tapping the opposite side of your body every day can be really useful. Okay, are we ready for one more layer? <laughs> okay, I just want you to do ABCs forward to back and then back to forward. I know, I know. Forward to back, back to forward. Stay with this pattern. 
You just have like 30 more seconds. If you don't finish the alphabet, it's okay. If anybody feels like they're getting better at doing the alphabet backwards, I'm very impressed. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> nice work, everybody, nice work. Maybe just five more seconds. Okay, and relax, awesome. Give one little full shake out to the whole body. Let your lips, let everything go. Make some sounds. Uh, stick your tongue out. Uh, okay, good. We'll come back to the center. We'll quiet the body down. We'll close the eyes. Finding your breath at first. And then feeling the weight of your bones on the floor or on your chair. All the way up from either your feet or your sit bones. And just seeing what that feels like to really think about just the bones. How they're holding you up, how they're positioned, how the weight of the bones feels on the surface that you're on right now. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining today, everyone. <clears throat> All righty. Let's see. So yes, just as a couple reminders, maybe before um, people unmute themselves. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, good, I'm glad people like the kissy lips variation. Um, we've got all of these recordings on our YouTube channel. So Cynthia just posted our, our channel down below in the chat box. So you can check that out if you're wanting to do more classes outside of the days that we already have these classes. Um, or if you wanted to send it to people and, and share it. Just one more big thanks to Move United. And I am going, if people want to stay on, and I'll answer questions too, but I'll I'll get the NorCal SCI link and I'll post that in the, in the chat box as well. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining today, everybody. You can hang around if you've got questions. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next week. Okay, let me get this email. Rachel, it's Lori. Hey, Lori. I have a question about